Okay, um, in this video I'm going to do <clears throat> an example using Simpson's rule, um, which is basically just a technique um, to calculate um, the approximate value of a definite integral. So Simpson's rule says the following. It says if you want to uh, approximate an integral from A to B, um, whatever the function is, it says basically what we uh, set that roughly equal to is delta x over 3 where delta x is the length of the interval divided by n. Um, for Simpson's rule, you have to use an even number of intervals. And then it says all you do is you just take the first, evaluate the function at the first point, um, four times the function evaluated at the next one. Notice the pattern. It basically is going to alternate. So the first point, the coefficient is a 1. The last point, the coefficient is also a 1. The pen's not working too well. Um, so the coefficients are 1 and a 1, and then they alternate 4, 2, 4, the next one would be a 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, etc., until you get to the last one. Alright, so Simpson's uh, rule is pretty easy to use, in fact, but the only thing tedious is just these computations are going to be, you know, pretty obnoxious in general. So um, let's do one little problem here. So let's approximate the integral from 0 to 3. 1 over 1 plus x to the fifth dx. Um, we're going to use six intervals. So I'm integrating from 0 to 3. That's basically um, the interval that I'm using. So delta x is going to have value 3 minus 0, and we divide it by the number of pieces. So we'll get 3 sixths, which is 1 half. So I'll move over to 1 half, to 1, 3 halves, two, uh, five halves, there we go. So those are going to be my five points that I'm going to use. Probably a good chance I'm just going to set this one up. Actually, I guess I won't be lazy. I'll compute it. Um, it's just going to be really tedious. So, all right, it says this integral then is roughly equal to, it says we take our delta x value, which is one half, and then we have to divide that by three. And then all we have to do, again, it says we take our function, we'll have to evaluate it um, at our x sub 0 value. And so this is our x sub 0, 1 half will be x sub 1, 1 will be our x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5, and our little x sub 6. Okay, so we have to take f of x sub 0, and then it says it starts alternating 4 times f of x sub 1, 2 times f of x sub 2 um, plus 4 times f of x sub 3 plus 2 times f of x sub 4 pretty tedious 4 times f of x sub 5 and then again on the last point we don't do anything we just evaluate it at that point all right, well, again, in this case, we know what our f of x is. It's the function that we're integrating, 1 over 1 plus x to the fifth. That's our f of x value. So now we're simply just going to have to start computing this. So let me give myself a little bit more room because I'm going to run out of room here. Okay, so 1 half divided by 3 is going to give us 1 sixth. And then I would have to plug the first point into my function. Again, um, we started at 0, then went to 1 half, 1, 3 halves, 2, 5 halves, and 3. Um, again, that was our x sub 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I accidentally probably shouldn't have erased them. I'll put them down here. So those are the values, again, that we're plugging in for my interval just a second ago. Okay, well, if I plug my first point in, so f of x sub 0, it says we'll get 1 over 1 plus 0 to the fifth, which would just be uh, 0, or 1 over 1 plus 0. Then it says we have to take 4 times the next value, which will be 1 over 1 plus, okay, so we'll take 1 half and raise that all to the fifth power. And then we'll have 2 times the um, f of x sub 2, so it says we get 1 over 1 plus, okay, so my x sub 2 value is, is 1 here. Um, so we'll get 1 plus 1 to the fifth power plus 
let me squeeze it in over here. So let's see, so that was f of x of 0, 1, 2, so we have 4 times our x of 3 value, which will be 1 plus 3 halves raised to the 5th power. Then we'll have 2 times, we'll have to plug in 1 over 1 plus 2 to the 5th power. Ooh, you can already see pretty tedious, right? Um, so x of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we're now on our x of 5. So we'll get plus 4 times 1 over 1 plus our x of 5 value is 5 halves. We have to raise all that to the 5th power. And then last but not least, we just have to plug the last point into our function. So 1 over 1 plus 3 to the 5th power. Whew. Okay, so very tedious to compute here, you can see for sure. Um, I'm actually going to cheat. I figure if you're at this point in Calculus 2, um, you can probably evaluate all this by yourself. Let me see if I can't track down the solution here real quick and at least let you know what the answer is. Um, if you really get stuck out there in internet land, YouTube land, let me know um, and maybe I'll be bored enough one day to actually compute all this out, but I really don't want to. So it looks like um, it looks like the answer to this should be roughly equal to 1.074915 when you compute this out. So you can check that and make sure it works. Um, so again, the setup is I think usually the main thing people will be worried about. Again, a very tedious computation really no matter what unless they give you an extremely easy function. But I hope this example helps and makes some sense. I'm going to do another video involving error bounds in Simpson's rule. Feel free to um, dig around and see if you can't find that one. Um, as always, feel free to post comments and questions. Hopefully me or um, somebody else can help you out. So, um, all right, and good luck out there.